the evidence to me that just cries out that there's a God is the study of DNA. DNA is a very powerful, massive information storage system. In fact, DNA that makes up our genes actually is like books of information that's read by a language system. It's absolutely phenomenal. And scientists know today that language as a code only come from an intelligence and information only comes from information. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to a code. Nobody's ever seen matter by itself give rise to information. And as you look at DNA, it actually cries out in meaning God created the universe. We all begin as a single cell the size of a period at the end of a sentence. How does that cell know how to build a, a body with 100 trillion uh, cells in it? Thousands of different kinds, and each one of them is so complex nanochemical machinery beyond our comprehension how it works and encoded is the instruction manual it's the manufacturer's manual how to build and operate every part of this incredible body made up of a hundred trillion cells furthermore DNA is a three-dimensional molecule that is self-replicating each molecule is able to make an identical copy quickly and efficiently. The Lord has even programmed DNA to detect and correct replication errors. These sophisticated capabilities far exceed man's means. God has created the DNA molecule in such a way that it is self-correcting. There are special proteins called enzymes that go up and down the DNA molecule looking for and making repairs on a minute-by-minute, second-by-second basis. God created us with a DNA code that actually has what we call editase or editorial type enzymes. Just as an editor reads a newspaper or a book looking for mistakes, so God has created special enzymes enzymes that go up and down our DNA molecule repairing the mistakes in ways that are unbelievably complex. Our DNA has information in it and there is a whole field of scientific study called information science which studies how information originates, how it's transmitted and so on. And one of the laws of information science says that information never originates by itself in matter, never spontaneously comes about. Anytime we trace uh, the copying of information back to its source, it always, it always comes back to a mind. And since we have creative information in DNA, that tells me that DNA comes from intelligence. It's not something that could possibly come about through millions of years of mutations and natural selection. Okay, so one, one, two, three, five, that's the beginning of the Fibonacci sequence. Next number in the sequence, what do you think? How about eight? The number after that, 13. The number after that, 21. So if you're getting those right along with me, then you've recognized the pattern that I wrote with the first few numbers in the Fibonacci sequence, which is this. It starts with a one, the next number is a one, then after that, to get the next number, you'll always add the two numbers that came before that. So one and one is two, one and two is three, two and three is five, three and five is eight, so on and so forth. So that's, the, that's recognizing the pattern that exists in the Fibonacci sequence. So it turns out that this sequence of numbers has all kinds of applications. It describes all kinds of things in the world that we see around us. a conspiracy to hide this information that DNA is a Fibonacci is an exemplification of this uh, number called, or entity uh, ratio sequence called the uh, golden ratio the ratio that proves the existence of intelligent design or the uh, reality of intelligent design of the cosmos I mean if you go to the golden ratio site for Wikipedia 2 on the same theme um, <laughs> They don't mention any of this stuff in nature that we're going to talk about here that we talked about on the show two days ago and that we're talking about here. They talk about how it's found in architecture and math and all this kind of stuff. They don't discuss it, how it's found in the measurements of the human arm. Why not? It's just, it's, it, I mean, well, I think I'm making, that's the point here. I think that just made sense to me, thinking this through as I say it to you. It has to be a conspiracy. How could all of this be overlooked and how could Wikipedia leave it out? It's, it can't be, it has to be somehow that big money has pushed their influence uh, 
somehow, and they've had a drive to keep this covered up or something. These can't all be coincidences. And since they're doing that with everything else, it has to be the case that uh, there's some movement to keep this stifled. I mean, why isn't in, here's another piece to add to this. Why isn't it, this in our education system? We learn all this junk geometry, pea brain stuff when you take geometry in high school, and they don't teach you about any of this? The golden ratio everywhere in nature? I, I went through ed, elementary school, you know, high school, college, uh, un, you know, undergrad degree in college, uh, master's degree, and halfway through PhD, and never was this, any of this mentioned. It, and we know who controls the universities, uh, the big money behind it, all the way up to the un, Illuminati Nephilim uh, controllers. So this can't be. This is planned, okay? And you just wonder. It's got. I mean, I'm almost concluding here in my mind. This Davidson college site showing up number one in Google all the time and the first page and Wikipedia having the strange measurements which don't correlate with all kinds of these examples from academic sites I'm finding I'm putting them all pictures of the uh, screenshots in the newsletter um, it's got to be a conspiracy I mean we could keep going compiling the evidence it would just all lead to it so and that and if we could keep compiling evidence of it being a conspiracy I mean, everything points towards it. I'm just throwing ideas off the top of my head. These strange sites show up at the top. Wikipedia is wrong. It's covered up completely in, in the best-selling books about the Golden Ratio, which come from uh, wealthy university professors. It's uh, the universities and the education, government-controlled education system absolutely covers it up. You see how, I mean, everything's falling in the same direction. You know, the, so when everything, uh, all these conclusions point to the same direction, that it's covered up and hidden. I mean, this is pretty powerful stuff that we're going over. I mean, there's no anthropologist or biologist on the planet who can explain this one. How how the sunflower evolved a bunch of spirals in it. It's a, it's seed pod design, and how those spirals exactly lead to a golden ratio Fibonacci series numbers. Unbelievable. Okay, this is it. There's no question. I mean, we've all been lied to all through our undergraduate college degrees and our elementary schools and on our TVs just by them not discussing all this. I mean, you know how many examples I have here? There's so many and they're all this powerful. Okay? And all this was hidden from us while we were in our schools learning about what were we learning about? Um, plate tectonics theory. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty sad. Pretty sad case. Now, there are some mathematical miracles of the Quran. <sighs> Throughout all the Quran, if you count some specific words, you will come across to, a very, to very meaningful results. I would like to give you some examples. For instance, if you count the word punishment in the Holy Quran, throughout the whole Quran, it is repeated some 117 times. Whereas, the word forgive is repeated some 234 times inside the whole Quran. 234. If you multiply 117 by 2, you're going to have 234. It is very meaningful. Why? Because Quranic morality, Allah recommends, Allah orders believers, Allah orders Muslim, Muslims to forgive rather than punishing. It is very meaningful. Moreover, Allah orders to our Prophet, say, it is repeated some 332 times. And the response, they said, it is again equally repeated some 332 times. The words world and, and hereafter, they are repeated 115 times equally. Devil and angel, those two words are equally repeated some 88 times. Now, heaven and hell, those two words are equal, equally repeated 77 times. Zekah, zekah is an Arabic word, its translation is donation. The financial donation that a Muslim is supposed to give to poor. And it is repeated 32 times. And the barakah, the blessing that comes out of giving a donation to a poor, it is repeated 32 times. It is equally repeated. It is very meaningful again. Now, summer, hot, and winter cold, 
those words are equally repeated five times. And richness and poverty, those two words, it is very interesting. Rich, richness is repeated 26 times, whereas the poverty is half of 26, which is 13. And woman and man, those are repeated equally 23 times. Well, do you know any idea what those numbers represent? Well, let me remind you, if you remember from the chromosome numbers of a human being, from the previous slides, a human body contains 46 different chromosomes. That comes the half of this 46, which is 23, comes from the father. And the other half, which is 23, comes from the mother. Whereas, you got the same repetition number for woman, woman and man. 23 and 23. If you add 23 to 23, you're going to have 46, which will give you the chromosome number of a human being. Now, finally, I would like to give you the meaning of land and sea. Land is repeated 13 times, whereas the word sea repeated 32 times. Well, at first sight, it doesn't seem to be very meaningful. However, if you do a simple math, you're going to have 13. If you add 32, you're going to have 45 as for the result. And the percentages, if you divide 13 to 45, you're going to have 28,88%. And 32 to 45, as for the word C, you're going to have 71,11%. Now, do you have any idea what those percentages represent? Well, I'll tell you, those numbers will give you the, all the lands all over the world on the earth occupies 28,88% of the whole earth. And all the seas, oceans, rivers, all the water occupies 71,11% of the whole earth. Now again, these repetition numbers are very meaningful and it clearly represents us and gives us good scientific evidences that the Holy Quran is word of Allah. And it cannot be, definitely can't be a scripture of a man. This is not possible. So... For more information, I would highly recommend you to visit harunyahya.com. And in harunyahya.com, you will see that all the information about the miracles of the Quran, uh, of course, since we are limited of time, we could just put here like uh, 20, 30 of them. However, if you visit and read the miracles of the Quran, the word miracles of, uh, uh, the book miracles of the Quran from Harun Yahya, you will see that there are more than 120, 130 different scientific evidences for the miracles of the Quran. And all those informations are free, free to download, free to duplicate, free to distribute, and for your use for the cause of Islam. Thank you very much for listening.